All right, Ronan and MMA, welcome back to the channel. Now, today we are going to be calling out the worst ranked squatters in the UFC. If you are an avid UFC fan or an MMA fan in general, you may have heard this term before. It is essentially somebody who is taking up a spot in the rankings near the top of their division with no justification for being there whatsoever. I have made a list. I have picked one fighter specifically from each weight class in the men's divisions, and I'm going to go over all of those in just a second. But before I do, I want to say the reason I did this video or have decided to do this video today is because because yesterday at Media Day, Brendan Allen, rightly so by the way, called out the media for this very issue. The reason why it's important that he calls out the media rather than the fighters is because a, a panel of media members are the ones that determine the rankings for each division. So I, I really like that he did that. However, he was specifically talking about his weight class. So I want to do it for every single weight class. I will say this also. Not all rank squatters are created equally, okay? So some of these guys on here are less consequential than others. Some of these guys on here you may not even agree with, but I did want to pick a single guy for every single division. So if you disagree with one, just put it in the comments down below and I will rethink it perhaps. Now, let's get right to it. We will start with the flyweight division. Men's 125 pound, Alex Perez, okay? At number seven, hasn't fought since July of 2022. By the way, it was a loss, so we're at a be about a year and a half now. After that fight, he's had three canceled fights, and before that fight, he had six canceled fights in between his most recent fight and the one right before that, which were both losses, one to Pantoja and one to Figueredo. This seems to be an issue with a, a, a lot of guys is when they co constantly get to fight ahead of their ranking spot, there is no real consequence or punishment for losing that fight. In the last three years, as I said, the guy's only fought twice. Both of them were losses. For some reason, still holds a number seven spot. I would much rather get rid of him out of the rankings and have a guy like Manel Cap moving up a spot, becoming closer to that top five. Especially a guy like Manel Cap, by the way, who took on a guy making his UFC debut in his last fight on short notice because his opponent that was ranked ahead of him in Kaikara France decided to pull out. Manel Kopp essentially gets punished for that by not being able to move up in the rankings because the guy that he fought had no number beside his name, whereas Kaikara France, the guy who pulled out, essentially gets rewarded for doing so by keeping that number five spot. So, Alex Perez, get him out of the top 15. He's very inactive. He's had multiple canceled fights. Some of them were due to weight issues also, so they're not even all injury related. Get rid of him. Moving up to the men's 135 pound division bantamweight. Henry Cejudo, in my opinion, is this div uh, division's worst ranked squatter. I know there are going to be people that disagree with this simply because of his accomplishments in this division, but I'm going to go over some of the things as to why I think he is the worst ranked squatter in this division. So the guy's last win was three and a half years ago, okay, against Dominic Cruz, who uh, is in the top 10 right now, but when Henry Cejudo fought him, was not, okay, and was coming off of the couch after a four-year layoff, got the call on extremely short notice to come and fight Henry Cejudo and did so. Not the most impressive win not the most impressive dominant cruise so it's just it is what it is right then Cejudo takes three years off after that and loses to Aljamain Sterling and somehow gets rewarded with a number three spot after losing it doesn't make any sense whatsoever the guy his last win was over an unranked guy off the couch right who had been off the or on the couch for four years I would rather see guys like Song Yudong get one step closer to the top five guys who have been active guys who have been winning they should get rewarded for it when you take three years off and then you come back and lose you shouldn't just get a number three ranking beside your name when you didn't have one coming into that fight it makes no sense whatsoever none of his wins from 2017 onward and that's both flyweight and bantamweight none of them are active ufc fighters get rid of them out of the fucking top five at the very least moving up to i almost said moving up the card but regardless the featherweight division, I, I would imagine a lot of you already know who this is going to be. Brian fucking Ortega, dude, needs to get out of these rankings. It makes no sense. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate, I want to stress this. It's not these fighters' fault. These media members that place them at these numbers week in and week out after things get shuffled up is, is fucking retarded. It seems like they just put who is more famous. If you are more famous and you lose or you don't get a win for three years, don't worry. We'll just keep you at that spot. Makes no fucking sense. Brian Ortega's last win came over three years ago against the Korean Zombie, who's now retired, okay? Even Korean Zombie was more active than Brian Ortega was, and Korean Zombie's way longer in the tooth, and, you know, as I said, is retired. After that, he had two back-to-back -back losses to Volkanovski and Yair. He also got, you know, fucked up by Max Holloway pretty badly before the Korean Zombie fight. Even his last fight 
was over a year ago, right? But the last win was over three. So I don't understand how somebody's consistently losing and also not active gets to keep a number three ranking spot. And it's what I was speaking about earlier. If you get to just constantly fight the guys ahead of you, there's no consequence for fucking losing. And there should be, dude. And there should also be a consequence for remaining inactive. If you were still in the testing pool, if you were still considered an active UFC fighter and you just haven't fought in a year and a half, get get him out. If you want to bring him back in and give him a higher ranked opponent right away and then he gets a win, give him a spot back, fine. But we've got guys like fucking Ar- uh, Arnold Allen, Ilya uh, Toporia, who deserve that number three to four spot, right? Arnold Allen's ranked number four. He had a way closer fight with Max Holloway than Brian Ortega could have ever fucking dreamed of. Yet somehow, Arnold Allen is below him in the rankings. And he's beaten better competition, in my opinion, at this point, right? The last good win of Brian Ortega's was what? Fucking Frankie Edgar. Do you know what I mean? Korean Zombie was towards the end of his career when that happened. Frankie Edgar was fighting at a weight class above of where he should have been when that happened, right? Brendan Allen, or pardon me, Arnold Allen and both Ilya Toporia deserve to be higher ranked. And then even when you make the Toporia versus Volkanovski fight, it won't look like the champions fighting number five, right? Which I, you know, it's not big, that big of a difference from number five to number four, but somebody that is actually within inside the top five, I feel like it'll be looked at much more favorably than somebody who's just on the or, uh, just on the edge of that top five spot. Pardon me. Anyways, dude, they've both been more active, dude. Ortega needs to get the fuck out of the rankings. What? Because he's got a pretty face and baby blue eyes or what the fuck is it? Like, I don't understand, dude. Get rid of him, media members, you fucking idiots. This guy has not won in a very long time and he's just completely inactive. I mean, his ex-girlfriend's more active than he is for fuck's sakes. Do you know what I mean? Anyways, moving up. This one too, by the way, is one of those ones that I consider to be worse than the other guys. That's more consequential. When you're holding up number three, dude, that top three spot's a big deal. And he's been holding that spot for years. Habib has a more recent win than Brian fucking Ortega, okay? Insane. Anyways, moving up. This is another one that I find to be pretty consequential also. At the lightweight division, the men's 155 pound, okay? It's got a couple of guys you could go with, but I'm going to go with one that I've consistently been bitching about, uh, you know, for a good while now, and that is Michael fucking Chandler, dude. Fair enough, he was pretty active when he first got, uh, or at the very least, before he got coaxed into accepting the Ultimate Fighter and the Conor McGregor fight that has still yet to happen, but his last fight was over a year ago, and it was a loss to Dustin Poirier, okay? Since joining the UFC, guy's gone 2-3, and three, and is 0-3 against top 5 competition, yet somehow has held firm at number 5 for, what, a year and a half or something along those lines? Maybe even before that. I think ever since he beat Dan Hooker, actually. Since he got in the UFC, he has been at number 5, right? But he's lost to Gaethje Poirier and Oliveira, getting finished by 2 out of the 3 of them. His best win was over Dan Hooker, who was ranked number six at the time, but that was almost three years ago now. Dan Hooker's not ranked number six anymore. Do you know what I mean? Dan Hooker's ranked number nine currently. Basically, no matter what happens to Chandler, he just gets to stay at five for some fucking reason, and now maybe they're doing it now so that if Conor comes back and beats him, they could argue for a Conor McGregor title shot. But up until the, up until now, why has he been here? in the number five spot, when the only two guys he's beaten are Dan Hooker and Tony Ferguson, both ranked pretty far down the uh, the top 15, and Tony Ferguson, obviously, on a pretty bad fucking losing skid, do you know what I mean? He was on a three-fight skid at the time of this fight. I would way rather see guys like Mateusz Gamrot, Arm, uh, Armin Sarukian, Rafael Fazeev, these kind of guys get bumped up a spot, these kind of guys that have been fighting, active, winning, or at the very least, try to jump ahead and then don't like Raphael Fazeev, right? This is why I don't consider a guy like Justin Gaethje a rank squatter ever because he's actually willing to fight guys ranked beneath him when he feels that he needs to. These guys have been way more active, have won more fights than Chandler over the last couple of years, and I want to see these younger dudes get fucking title shots. But when they're all sitting outside six, seven, eight, you can't really, you can't justify that. So, Chandler needs to get the fuck out of the lightweight rankings. If they fight at 170 pounds and then they give Conor a title shot off of that, it would be even more bullshit. I just don't understand it. 
because as I said, you can maybe justify it now. Oh, we want to make sure that Connor gets a number beside his name upon his return if he were to win. But for the last fucking what year and a half, what what's justifying his number five spot moving up to 170 pounds. This will probably piss off quite a few people. We are at the men's welterweight division. I know he's fighting soon, but I got to fucking do it, dude. Colby Covington. You know, I had to pick somebody in this division, and he is by far the worst ranked squatter at that division. Now, I will say, less consequential because it won't matter after him and Leon face off, right? Either he wins and becomes champion, he's going to have to fight these contenders, or he loses, and I highly doubt the UFC is going to be willing to give him a fourth title opportunity considering he's like mid to late 30s and would have at this point gone 0-3 in title shots against two different fighters, okay? But we all know the stats, right? Bro's last win was Jorge Masvidal over a year and a half ago. In the last four years, he's only fought once a year on average, right? He's fought, no, not even on average. In the last four years, he's fought once a year, okay? And has gone two and two in his last four. And I know that both of those losses were to Kamaru Usman. And I know that one of them, the second one in particular, should have maybe been a draw. But it doesn't matter. He's two and two in his last four, okay? And his last finish, aside from Tyron Woodley injuring his rib, came all the way back in 2016, which was against Max Griffin, who I don't think is ever a serious title contender whatsoever, but he doesn't have a single win over a currently ranked welterweight. I want to see, and, and I, you know, I said he was less consequential, but only because he's got a fight scheduled with the champion. If he didn't, I would be much more fucking angry with Colby Covington's inactivity because at welterweight, we've got a bunch of dudes, stacked division, Shavkat Rachmanov, fucking all these dudes, Jack Dallamedalena, Ian Gary, all these up and comer dudes that deserve a chance to fight ahead of them. Do you know what I mean? Now, some of them, to be fair, have scheduled fights, but I feel like maybe some of them could have gotten a title opportunity or a top three, top five opportunity faster than they have, if not for Colby Covington. Do you know what I mean? Extremely inactive, no wins over a ranked opponent that is currently ranked, pardon me. And two and two in his last four, rarely gets finishes. Do you know what I mean? I know he has exciting fights um, and, and all that stuff and he's a character and whatever, but still, I had to pick somebody. And in my opinion, he's by far the worst ranked squatter at 170, moving up the card, not the card. I did it again, boys. Men's 185 pound. We are at middleweight. I'm going to agree with Arnold, uh, Brendan Allen, pardon me. He called out two guys. I'm going to specifically focus on Paulo Costa. He is the worst ranked squatter in this division, without a doubt, in my fucking mind. Jack Hermanson has been pretty inactive also, but it, it, no, nowhere near to the fuckery that Paulo Costa has brought us all, okay? Last fight and win was over a year ago to an unranked, older Luke Rockhold, who was trying to make a return, right? Before that, his last win came all the way back in 2019, which was a controversial decision over Yoel Romero. Lots of people thought Yoel should have gotten the nod, which is why they ended up giving Yoel a title shot off of a loss, right? Either way, get him the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? This guy, he doesn't have a win over any ranked middleweight. He's pulled out of five fights since 2021. And this, I understand that the last one was a little bit, you know, legitimate, I guess we could say. None of the other ones were, though. None of the other ones were, he, he did he disclose a hor horrific injury like he had on his elbow this time around, right? He just, quite frankly, fucked around, right? And then even the shit that he pulled on Marvin Vittori drove me crazy. You show up and refuse to cut weight after Marvin Vittori's already well into his weight cut. Vittori takes the fight anyways and fucking whoops ya. Do you know what I mean? Like this dude has fucked around so much. There's no way he should be holding a number five or six spot or whatever the fuck it is. Okay. Anyways, moving up to the men's 205 pound division light heavyweight. Now, nobody at 205 was really... Um, consequential in my opinion or at the very least the ones that were like maybe Yuri Prohaska and Jamal Hill it's not rank squatting they were injured do you know what I mean so I had to pick somebody so I went with Anthony Smith okay again not very consequential but regardless you could have maybe gone with Magomed on Kalaev, but to be fair he's tried to fight you know what I mean high ranked opponents it's just that he keeps fucking up so maybe Magomed could be an honorable mention here but Anthony Smith in my opinion dude Ranked number eight for no fucking reason. You have to go all the way back to the beginning of 2021 to get a win that isn't Ryan Spann, okay? And it came against Jimmy Crute, who is not in the top 15 currently. Before that, it was Devin Clark, who is also not in the top 15. You have to go back to 2018 to find a ranked opponent that isn't Ryan Spann over five years ago to Volkan Ozdemir. And honestly, that, that hasn't really aged all that well, right? Volkan's gone four, uh, four and four 
in that time after that Anthony Smith fight five years ago. Also, you've seen a clear decline in Smith's game. If you compare the way that he beat Ryan Spann the first time and the way that he beat him this this most recent time, which, by the way, they were only about two years apart. I don't even think Spann should be anywhere near the top 10. He only has one win inside the top 15, and it came to Dom Reyes, who, you know, it's, I mean, it's not the same Dom Reyes that it was that fought John Jones. He's been finished brutally twice before that and was you know, maybe, maybe not on the way out the fucking door. Do you know what I mean? So that one's not all that impressive. I don't understand. Again, it's one of those situations where they give Ryan Span the opportunity to fight above him twice. He loses. There's no punishment for it whatsoever. You know what I mean? Whereas then Volkan Ozdemir, who's trying to be more active, fought a newcomer, doesn't get rewarded for it whatsoever. Anthony Smith has not beaten anybody that would justify a number eight, eighth ranks, uh, eighth ranked spot at least in the last five fucking years okay so you can get rid of them again it's not all that consequential but it is what it is i had to pick somebody moving up to heavyweight this one in my opinion is extremely consequential and it became even more consequential after ufc 295 stipe miocic i gotta do it man i understand there's gonna be people that are gonna be like oh but he's the heavyweight goat he's the only guy that actually like beat francis and ganu convincingly not like the Derek lewis fight and all this bullshit right his last win was nearly three and a half years ago over a Daniel Cormier who has long since been retired, okay? His last win that wasn't Daniel Cormier was at the very beginning of 2018. So we're coming up on six years very, very soon, right? If we have to go back to find a different heavyweight that isn't Daniel Cormier. He held up the division for a very long time, him and DC both, with their trilogy that happened. And he's just unbelievably inactive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate that in a second, right? His last fight was in March of 2021. So nearly three years ago. And it was a brutal, brutal, brutal knockout loss to Francis Ngannou. He's two and two in his last four, getting finished in both of them, okay? Also, for some reason, this guy just gets never-ending title opportunities. I feel like immediate rematches for champions really fuck this shit over too. I'm not saying that this is better per se, and glory kickboxing for a very long time wasn't really trying to sell pay-per-views. They would just not ever give champions immediate rematches. They would have to go win one or two, and then they would get to fight again. And even if you had guys that fought four or five times, at the very least, they weren't just like back to back to back to back holding up the division. They would make the guy go get a couple of wins, and then you can come back and try again. This is We see this happen a lot when champions get immediate rematches. It holds shit up for a very long time anyways as i said two and two in his last four for some reason gets never ending title opportunities despite guys at heavyweight being way more active with way more impressive wins right i know he had impressive wins at the time he was doing the damn thing you know when right before he became champion on the way up to it not so much anymore if we go over it right the only guy on stipe's resume that is still an active ufc heavyweight and he's not ranked by the way is andre arlovsky this fight came back or was back in 2016, right? Arlovsky, since 2016, this is an insane stat, and it makes me respect the fuck out of Andre Arlovsky even more than I already did. In the last seven years or so, the guy has fought 21 times. 21 fucking times. We don't see young, like, in their prime athletes fight that much. He is three times a year strict. I fucking love it, dude. Whereas, in those last, you know, seven, eight years... Stipe's fought eight times, eight fights in eight years, averaging one fight per year. Brutal, dude. Brutal. Also, the fact that John Jones, I just spat. The fact that Jones is out for another good long while than he was already. Do you know what I mean? They're just going to be holding it up for like what? A number fucking year, another year, right? And he's just going to hold that number four spot completely undeservingly. So there are so many contenders at heavyweight right now, or maybe not so many, but at the very least three that I think would give Stipe a real run for his money, especially at the age that he's at now, especially if you consider and factor in all the inactivity and how he's been losing, not recently because they were a long time ago because he doesn't fucking fight, but his most recent losses were all extremely brutal. All right, boys, that's it. These are all, in my opinion, the worst ranked squatters that exist throughout the UFC. As I said, some are worse than others. They're not all created equally. If I had to choose maybe three that I found to be the most consequential, I think I would have to go with Brian Ortega, okay? 
Stipe Miocic for sure. And then I guess maybe Michael Chandler or perhaps Henry Cejudo. But even still, that jump from the Ortega and Miocic level of consequence to Cejudo and Michael Chandler is like, they're very far apart in my opinion. Stipe and Brian Ortega are the most guilty culprits here. Again, blame the media, not the fighters necessarily, because the media are the one that keeps giving these giving them these numbers every fucking week when they have to redo the rankings after fights happen. Do you know what I mean? So, anyways, like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.